Um, Saturday haul for you guys today, and I'm going to start off with a few repurchases. Um, I got another pack of the Shiseido Facial Cottons, which is my favorite, like, cotton. <laughs> and I've been using these for a long time. They're just my favorite cotton to use with toner. And then I also got another one of the Eminence Strawberry Rhubarb Dermafoliant with Lactic Acid. It's a 4.2 ounce kind of tin bottle in a shaker. Let me pull it out so I can show it to you guys. I, you guys have heard me talk about this product for years. I've been using this product for years. I like to mix it with whatever cleanser I have going on in the morning. And that's my morning cleanse with a nice exfoliation to it. So love this product. Again, been using it for years. And then Anastasia Beverly Hills came out with some more shades in her lip pencils, her lipsticks, and then also I believe her liquid lips, which I'm not into that. So I did pick up one of her new lip liners and then also one of her new lipsticks, which is actually the lip combination that I have on my lips today. So the lip pencil that I got is Muted Mauve. I really like these pencils. I'm gonna go ahead and swatch the other four that I have too, just for comparison so you can kind of see them all together as well. They're a wooden sharpen style pencil. These ones just happen to be square, which really doesn't make a difference to me. Um, they go on really nice. Again, this is the shade that I have on today in Muted Mauve. There is a total of 0 0.053 ounces of product. You can tell it's a pretty long pencil. And then these pencils are made in the Czech Republic. So again, this is the Muted Mauve shade. And I've got it on as well. And then let me grab the other four that I have so that you can see them all together. If, you know, like, I think it's helpful kind of when you're blind buying online to see it in comparison to other shades. So I've got Baby Roses right here. That one's Baby Roses. And then I have got Hazelnut. So here's Hazelnut. And then we've got Deep Taupe right here. So that one is deep taupe. And then the last one that I have got is sunbaked. So here is sunbaked right here. Just so you can see the four existing shades are the older shades with that newer one up top right there. So that one again is the new one in muted mauve. And then the new shade of the lipstick that I got is in Hush Pink, and this is a matte lipstick. And then this is the first one in her kind of re-release lipstick range that I've tried in the matte formulation. And again, that's also what I have got on my lips today. There's 0.1 ounces of product in this guy, and it's made in the USA. So here is the box packaging. And I'll swatch the four cream shades that I have too, because again, I think it will be quite helpful. So again, this is Hush Pink right here. The packaging is a click style packaging. It's got a nice weight to it. It feels nice and substantial. Let's swatch it right here. It is so, so creamy. Um, I wouldn't say it's an, a flat, flat matte. I would kind of call it a satin, but in order for it to be like a, um, a matte with that really comfortable feel to it, it's going to have a little bit of a, a creaminess as well. Otherwise, the flat, flat mattes are the more drying type formulas, but you can definitely tell this is a silicone kind of based formula. And for one of those kind of formulas, I feel like it sits really well on the lips. These are very, very creamy for a matte lipstick formula. So like I said, there's you know, quite a bit of slip uh, with the silicones in there to, you know, have that really smooth matte, but it looks so pretty. Again, it's not flat, flat matte. I think you can tell even in the viewfinder that there's just this little bit of a sheen to it, but I love it. It's such a pretty color. So that's the Hush Pink in the Matte Lipstick Formula, and that's one of her new shades. And then the other four that I do have are in the Cream Formula, and I've worn these a lot. So this first one is Haze. Just want you guys to be able to see all the kind of colors uh, together because they're all kind of the nude shades <laughs> um, and then we've got butterscotch right here so that one's butterscotch which has definitely got more like yellow to it and then we've got warm peach right here so that one is warm peach and then the last one is the shade teas which is a nude pink. Right there. So Tease would probably be the closest in shade, but I think that the new Hush Pink's got a little bit more warmth to it. And again, it's that more matte type of formula. But that way you can see kind of those shades together there.
The lipsticks do have a really light vanilla scent to them as well, which I really like. Um, another lip product that I got is a new one from Buxom, and this is the Plump Shot Sheer Tint Collagen Infused Lip Serum. And I was telling myself I'm not buying like glossy type products no more, but the more kind of gloss type products like this that have been coming out are more like balm infusions. They're not sticky and stuff like that. They feel more like a lip treatment. So I was swatching them inside of Ulta and I wanted a couple, but I, I just went with the one. I got the shade Soft Blush and I really like it. <laughs> it's got that kind of um, menthol minty scent to it, which I know not everybody loves. And then two, which was surprising, I didn't know that it was going to have like a sensation like plumping feel to it but it does I would say it's not like super intense but it's not super like muted either it's like a medium it's a medium <laughs> that lasts a, I don't know half hour or something like that which I didn't know so it does have that plumping tingling effect to it so um let's see here we've got 0.14 ounces of product in this guy and then this one is made in the USA so this is the packaging right here again this is uh, soft blush and I've actually been throwing this in my coat pocket and just putting it on kind of throughout the day and I really enjoy how it looks on the lips and I also really like how it feels like it feels more like a treatment than it does a gloss or anything like that I just left those up because again this is <laughs> a nude shade very light tint to it there were some shades in the range that had more color to them there was this really pretty like bright orange shade that I almost I was so close to buying that one, but I'm like, just get one, see how you like it. And I really like it. It's like, again, it's not sticky. It feels like nourishing. Um, be mindful of the plumping sensation and then also the the kind of uh, minty scent to it, which a lot of the Buxom lip products have, because I know, again, not everybody likes those, but I really like this product. I put it on, but I kind of want to stick with that matte formula from Anastasia on my lips. Or should I just put it on? <laughs> I'll just put it on just so you can kind of see I guess because I have used this quite a bit over lipsticks I got a cat hair on my lips which is wonderful let's get a little bit more just so you can kind of see I guess what it does to I guess a mat oh, it just feels so nice really liking this product so again this is the buxom plump shot in the shade soft blush and that's it right there just some really really good lip products i just love it when i purchase new makeup launches and i just love like every product that i use it's just like so satisfying to me <laughs> which is kind of my whole look today to be honest so we'll kind of get into the other things um i did get two shades of the uh urban decay stay naked quickie up to 24 hour wear multi-use concealers i guess i shouldn't say i got two shades i got one shade in the lighter shade and then my mom got a deeper shade and the lighter shade is just a little bit too light and so I wanted to mix the shade that she got with it to see kind of how it looks. So I've got two shades to show you guys and I've actually got a mixture of these two shades underneath my eyes today. I would say it's about a 50-50. I think that I use too much of the deeper shade because there is just a little bit of a darkness kind of right in this area a little bit of an orangey darkness and we'll talk about the kind of shades in a minute here. So the two shades that I have are 10NN and 30 nn so my mom got 30 nn and i got 10 nn and the shade that i wanted was the cool toned light one it was like cp or something like that 20 cp or something and on ulta inside the store online the urban decay website when these concealers launched um everywhere that particular shade is just not available so i don't know if it's a production thing or something happened with that particular shade and shipment or something but it's not available anywhere and that's the shade that I need I can just tell <laughs> so these two shades here are not quite right for me neither the light one or the other one or mix I just feel like they're too warm they are the neutral tones but on my like really kind of pink undertone they pull really warm um so anyway we've got a ton of product in these guys 0.55 fluid ounces which is almost half of a foundation shade and they call them multi-use so you can probably use them as foundations um and then these concealers see where they are made are also made in the USA so let's show you the box packaging here it's these guys right here um, these are quite large concealers like they're the same size 
as my number seven foundation bottle. <laughs> so they're in a pretty large packaging, pretty substantial amount of product. Um, they do have a synthetic brush on the end, which when I was in the store swatching the shades, I was actually putting on the back of my hand and then using this brush to blend it out. And it was buffing out the concealer really nice. So I think that it is functional. It's quite dense and firm, but it's still a softer synthetic. So it's going to buff out pretty quickly. I did use a sponge every time that I've used this, but if you were one to throw it in a bag and kind of use it on the go, I think this would probably work pretty good, you know, to kind of buff out the concealer. So there's a little cap on there like that. And then these do have doe foot applicators. So the first shade here we've got is 10 NN. So you got that larger kind of doe foot there. Should have wiped those lipstick swatches off. And I swatched this on my hand in the store. I was like, ah, that's too light. But as I kind of went around, it oxidized slightly. And when I used it by itself, after I set it, it did deepen up a little bit, but it was just ever so slightly a little bit brighter than I would have liked, but it does oxidize a little bit. And I think that the 30NN also oxidizes a little bit. So this one is 30NN right there. And then let me grab, um, let me grab something that I use a lot with kind of a pink undertone so you can see kind of the colors with something that really matches me well. So I've got the Eye Bright from Makeup Revolution which kind of matches my skin tone to perfection. It's the porcelain shade. It's got a really lovely pink undertone to it. Yeah, you can see it right there. Even just on my arm, you can see how it would blend into my skin a lot better. And then I love the Benefit Boing Bright On Concealer in Lychee, which is a little bit darker than the Revolution, but also a really strong kind of pink undertone to it. You can just see, I think, even since I've swatched those, that especially that shade that they have oxidized. And then talking about the formula with those Urban Decay, they are, for me, definitely full coverage. Um, and I had to work a little bit to blend them out just because they are so kind of a full coverage product and they also don't match my skin tone perfectly. So I had to kind of really work well at blending them in that area. But in terms of like the finish and how they look underneath the eyes for like that more full coverage, I think that they look really pretty. So when I get the shade that actually matches me well, I think it's going to be like... Ugh perfect you know what I mean because I do enjoy that full coverage with that really thin kind of texture it doesn't look heavy and then I set it with one of my absolute favorite setting powders which is the flower nose loose circus setting powder undetectable so like the pairing of the two with the lovely coverage and the texture with that powder it just you know it covers so well but it doesn't look like a bunch of product underneath my eyes I can see it just because the color <laughs> is a little off for my skin tone so yeah I'm excited when that shade that I really want comes into stock so I just want you guys to be able to see the tones so those two products I wear a lot and you can just see kind of how much better those kind of even blend into my skin tone that shade really deepened up since I swatched it but yeah, I like the formulation. I'm just not crazy about the colors that I got. So again, the first lighter shade is 10NN and 30NN. So I mixed them two together for underneath my eyes today, so. And then I've also got some new blushes. I purchased the new shade of the Lawless Make Me Blush in Daisy Pink. I thought it was going to be a really like bright poppin' blue-based pink. And it is a blue-based pink, but it's not quite as poppin' as I thought it was going to be because it's kind of a mid-tone on my skin tone. So there's 5.5 grams of product in here. And this guy is made in Italy. So this is kind of the special packaging that they did for this blush. Again, make the actual packaging special. <laughs> um, the box packaging can be plain. This packaging, I, I wish more brands would do that. Like the, you know, put the, the emphasis on the actual packaging and just keep the box packaging plain instead of like special edition of the box. <laughs> anyway, so this is Daisy Pink. And it's got a little bit of a, um, just a very, I call it a satin, if you will. And it is darker than it kind of looked online and what I thought it was going to be. And then I've used it a couple times and it's forming hard pan already. I don't know if it's pressed a little bit harder or not. But I'm going to show you another shade of blush from Lawless. It's a, a lovely blush. I've worn a ton. And I like this shade. I just thought it was going to be a little bit brighter. 
Still pretty though. Um, this one is pressed uh, a little bit harder though, I think. That one is daisy pink. And then one of my all-time faves, which I, th I think this was in a yearly favorites a couple years ago. This is Sakura. And this is much warmer than daisy pink. And I even just swatching them, yeah, it doesn't feel as hard pressed as daisy pink. It's softer, it feels smoother. And really, I was hoping that, you know, this would be a brighter blue-based pink with that more similar formulation to Secura. Um, but it's a little hard-pressed, it's not as soft, and it's a little bit deeper than I thought. Still get use out of it. It's not a bad blush, but um, it's not exactly how much I love Secura, which maybe I should have just stuck with Secura instead of trying to get another one. <laughs> but anyway, that is the Lawless uh, Daisy Pink blush right there compared to Secura. And I'll leave those up because I've got more kind of pinky blushes and stuff to show you guys. I got two shades of the Too Faced Cloud Crush blurring blushes and I was able to see them inside of Ulta and I lucked out because they had the candy clouds shade in stock and I was going to order online a couple times and I was like I just want to wait till I go in the store and then I think if I had heard correctly it might have went viral on like TikTok or something because it's sold out all over online so I was lucky enough to get it inside the store and I saw all the shades and I kind of wanted all the shades. <laughs> but I just got these two. So I got Candy Clouds and Te Tequila Sunset. And they're a diffused matte. It says 93% natural origin. Uh, 0.17 ounces of product in these guys. And these are also made in Italy. Uh, really cute packaging on these. Did I say these are from Too Faced? Yeah, they're from Too Faced. They did not have the eyeshadow palette in the store, which I kind of want to see that instead of like blind buy it. And then... I did haul the highlighter a couple weeks back and I was just not a fan of that. So really like these blushes though. So we'll start off with Candy Crush. So this is a blue-based matte pink blush. Um, I did think, especially looking at it, that it was also going to be a little bit more popping on the cheeks. It still pops, but not quite as bright as I was thinking it was going to be. So this one is Cloud Crush. It blends out on the skin really beautifully. But I wanted to leave those other blushes up so you can see them all together. So it's punchier than the Lawless blush for sure. Brighter and a little bit more punchier. Very pretty shade though. I was just hoping maybe it would be even more bright, I guess. <laughs> but that one is uh, Cloud Crush. And then Tequila... Sunset is the blush that I've got on my cheeks today and I love both of these shades. I love the formulation. I love the packaging. They color coded them so that it'd be easy to reach for. You got a little heart on there. At first I was trying to open it and I couldn't figure it out and this heart is kind of like a little lip so you put your finger underneath the bottom and then you pop it up like that. There's a mirror in there and again this is what I've got on my cheeks today and this is Tequila Sunset. And I mean, to be honest, I do, I want them all. <laughs> Cause I swatched them all in the store and they were all really pretty shades. So that one is Tequila Sunset and that's what I've got on my cheeks today. And then I also kind of wanted to swatch um, the Dior blush in Rosy Glow. Um, this is an OG product. It was a favorite blush of mine. I'll still pull it out. I've got the OG original and then I've also got the newer smaller one. I think that these went viral too. And these are punchy. These are popping. They're beautiful blushes. Um, I think that they're like a cult product for many reasons. They're just stunning. So this is the newer version of that product. Just so you can see them all for reference. I think you can even see in that swatch, it's just a, a little bit more bright. And the formula is thinner than either of those other two as well. And then the OG right here, which I've worn the Dior off because I've worn it so much. Which I think you can even see right there is just a little tiny bit more punchy than the newer reformulated version. So in case you have any of those. All really pretty blushes though and those Too Faced ones um, they're pigmented and they're they like blend out really easily on the cheeks like they're really really pretty again I, I want them all and then I also bought the new NARS soft matte advanced perfecting powder there's 0.31 ounces of product in this guy 
and it's made in the USA. So this is the box packaging. They did like, a, um, I think it was a Sephora app early purchase or whatever. Um, so I got the shade, what is this, uh, Cliff. And this is the lightest one and it does have a pigment to it. So when I first used it with like my normal foundation, it lightened up my foundation a bit. So today, normally I would use one uh, part of the darker foundation to two parts of the lighter foundation. I often have to kind of mix my foundations. Um, but today I use two parts of the darker foundation. I use the Bare Minerals, Bare Pro is what I've got on today, to one part of the lighter. So I kind of switched it up because this will lighten up my face. And I think the combination, you know, kind of reversing how I normally do my foundation like mix with this worked out really nice. And I must say I was... I wasn't expecting a lot out of this powder, um, but I love it. And I'm, I don't, I don't know if I'm happy about loving it because I go through pressed powders really quickly to, you know, I set my whole face really well. Um, and it's beautiful. It is such a beautiful powder. Um, and I'm going to go through it quickly <laughs> and I'm going to want to repurchase it. I just know it, but I wanted to get the second shade down so I can kind of stick to my normal, how I do my foundation and then see how that works as well. But that one has since sold out. So I haven't been able to get it. And then they didn't have them in the store when I was there the other day, but um, I've worn this a couple times uh, so far and you, you'll be able to see, you know, from the swatch that it does, you know, have color to it. But I mean, I'm telling you, I didn't, again, I didn't expect much from this powder, but it really almost blurs and, I don't know, makes your skin look just really pretty. And dare I say, I almost feel like it kind of has a moisturizing effect on my dry skin, which is very interesting for a powder. It feels so comfortable as well as looking like blurring and just, I don't know, just really, really pretty on the skin. So I'm very happy with this product. Um, it's going to be an expensive little addiction I'm sure <laughs> because I want to get the next shade down and I know I'm going to go through it quickly because 0.31 ounces in a pressed powder isn't a ton for me I set my face every single day I, I run through uh pressed powders especially quicker than loose ones but love 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 this powder there's I think six shades of it available um and it's stunning I haven't used it to set underneath my eyes just yet um I should do that because it might be really pretty. I'm just so like into my flower nose because it's just such an undetectable powder. And I think this one is going to show up a little bit more thick, especially since you can tell it's got a little bit of coverage. So I haven't done that yet, but what a beautiful powder from NARS. Again, this is the Soft Matte Advanced Perfecting Powder and it is matte, but it doesn't leave my skin at least looking like dull, especially for like a drier skin type that I have. And it does have that rubberized kind of packaging. It's very, very thin, um, but it's beautiful. Really, really lovely product from NARS there. And then I also got the new Dior Show Mitza Edition Eyeshadow Palette. And when I first saw this palette on the internet, I thought for sure it was a blush palette. And I had to kind of like read and I was like, it says eyeshadow palette. And I was like, oh, and I wanted it for a blush palette even though it's not one, I was gonna, I wanted to get it anyway. And then I found out it was an eyeshadow palette and then I was like, oh, I'm just gonna get it because maybe I can use it for both, right? Because it looks very highlight blush palette. You'll see here in a minute. Um, but it is referring to itself as an eyeshadow palette. So again, this is 001 Mitza Edition, 0.64 ounces of product. And this is the kind of first style of eyeshadow palette from Dior that I've seen in such a large packaging with just like eyeshadow only. Um, this guy here, it says on the back is made in France. This is the box packaging right here. And I got this um, off of the Sephora website. Um, packaging is really pretty. It's like a, a fabric almost on the front. And then this is what the back looks like. And this is the eyeshadow palette that I've got on my eyes today. And this is another um, palette. Like when I opened it up, I was like, oh, you know, it doesn't look super exciting in terms of the finishes or anything like that. But when I wore it, I just love each time that I've worn it, the looks that come out of it. I've got a, a cake liner in a deep kind of red Merlot shade that just pops with this eyeshadow palette. So this half right here are like shimmer satins and then so is this little triangle section in the middle. And then these four shades over here are mattes and they are pigmented, they blend out just stunning. I was very, very impressed um, with those matte eyeshadows and with any shade in the palette, I didn't get any fallout on my face, which was very impressive. Um, again, very easy to use mattes and they're pigmented and they blend out and the looks that come out of this are just so 
pretty, which is kind of what I expect from Dior like quince when I use them. There have been some duds and stuff like that in the past, but looks usually come out just pretty from Dior and I feel like this is no exception. Again, this is the eyeshadow palette that I've got on my eyes today and only this. Typically like for those shiny shades, you guys know I like those pop and blinding shiny shades on the lid, but um, I've got these two in the center on my lid today and it just looks very... I don't know, fresh. I feel actually quite Valentine's-like today. <laughs> so this is just another really happy surprise to me. I think that, again, um, the looks that come out of this are beautiful. There's a cat. Waffle. Um, these shimmer shades, you know, they're not the most punchy pop and shiny shades like we're used to kind of seeing, but they're stunning with those mattes. Um, really really like the looks that come out of this like sophisticatedly pretty pink um burgundy shadow palette so these ones are kind of the shimmery shades if you will i guess they're almost like satin shimmers to be honest i've got that shade underneath the brow right there and then a little bit of this pink with a blend out and then i've got both of these uh center triangle shades on the lid and I've got this shade and this shade on in the crease as well as this one, which I'll swatch those two in a minute. I am so impressed with those mattes though. I think that Dior should do more palettes like this, maybe a little less price tag, <laughs> but more palettes like this with like different covers on them. I think those would be super pretty. And then these last two shades right here. They're so finely milled, but still really, really pigmented, and they just blend out stunning. Yeah. And again, this is what I have got on my eyes today. And there are some lipsticks from the Mitza edition. I haven't seen them on Sephora. I haven't even seen them on, like, um, Nordstrom's or Neiman's. I, I've only seen them on the Dior website. I might. There are two shades in particular that I want quite a bit because I do get along with um, Dior lipsticks really well but yeah anyway let's try to get a little bit close up there you can kind of see those shades right there yeah and again this is what I've got on my eyes it's the Dior Mitza edition eyeshadow palette and then Viseart was doing a sale on their website so I picked up two palettes and then I went back and I ordered two more <laughs> I've been a long time as you guys know fan of Viseart shadows I've purchased like so many of them and then I was on their PR list for a while and I don't know what happened with that <laughs> this cat is he just that's the cat in the window <laughs> anyway I got the Petty Four um in Violetta there's 0.21 ounces of product so this is their midi one with the pan sizes they're one and a half grams per pan so they've got the little tiny guys and then they got the normal size and then this is kind of the midi size so there's 1.5 grams per shade in there so this is how this one comes right here and again this is in Violetta and you flip open your package and there are your shades. And I've used this one, definitely not a standalone for how I like to put on eyeshadow. And then this shade here was a little bit stiff in the pan, but I just kind of had to, you know, smush my brush in there and it looked really pretty on the lid. It's got a beautiful shine to it. And then these pop right out as well. I've got several of my uh, Viseart shadows in palettes in a great big like magnetic palette. I love that you can just easily pop them out. So that one is Violetta right there. You've got a shimmer, a really sparkly kind of foiled semi-metallic flaky shade. And then this one appears on matte with some sparkles in it. And this is a true matte eyeshadow right there. So that's the Violetta in the Petit Four. And then I also got the Viseart 12 Pan palette, which is their newest 12 Pan midi palette in Le Mirai Etendu. And this guy's got 18 grams of product. So these are the one and a half gram pans as well. This is what the box that it comes in looks like. And then here is your palette. So it says Le Mirai on there and it flips open. This is a standalone for me. It's got some really pretty shimmers and mattes in here. Um, beautiful Vizier quality. You guys, again, know how I feel about Vizier eyeshadows. <laughs> They're just really, really pretty. Also magnetized, easy to pop out. So, like, you can intermingle even that, you know, the Petty Fours in with this style packaging kind of mix and match and create your own, you know, palettes, which, again, I really appreciate when brands do that. So, this one's got a little bit more warmth in it compared to that one. It's a little bit lighter. 
they both have that kind of duochrome shine to them. And then this middle one. And then the bottom row here. Where was I? I was wearing this palette. And somebody was like, I really like your eyeshadow. And I was like, thanks. <laughs> but I was wearing this Le Mirai palette. So right there are the swatches of that one. Again, it's a standalone for me. It's really, really beautiful. And there's the Violetta. And those are from, I'm trying to... I think the best way to show you guys is there. Very beautiful eyeshadows there from uh, Vizier. I also placed an order on the Beauty Bay website. They were having a really, really awesome sale, and I love their 20 color eyeshadow palettes. I've got their bigger ones and smaller ones. I actually really love the Beauty Bay formula. <laughs> we'll just put it that way. The Nikki Tutorials palette is one that I love to travel with. I think I've hit pan in four shades in that palette. Um, I, anyway, I really get along with the Beauty Bay formula. Um, so I got the two newest palettes that they launched in their 20 color palette like setup. So um, 20 shades, 0 0.05 ounces per shade, massive amount of product. I think I paid like seven or eight dollars for each of these, which is just a steal in my opinion for as much product as you're getting and also um, the quality of the shadows is really good. So I got the Dark Fantasy. Um, I do get a little bit of fallout with them, but they typically brush off my face really nicely. So this is the Dark Fantasy palette right here. So what it looks like, there's again 0.05, I should tell you real quick where it's made. Um, I believe they're made in the PRC. Yes, made in the PRC. And then both of these are standalone for me. And this is your color story. So it's quite dark and you've got this matte white right here. So I can like dip my brush majority in a white and just dab into a little bit of a brown and I can get a, a nice kind of cream tone underneath the brow bone shade for a matte highlight. So I like that and there's some just beautiful shimmers in here. Just really, really pretty, and they're so affordable. Beauty Bay always has, it seems like, a uh, like smoke and sale going on. Next ones. And then these guys. So pretty though. I just, I just really like these palettes. And these ones. I feel like that Nikki Tutorials Beauty Bay palette got kind of mixed reviews. I got along with it really well. I thought about trying to do like if I could only have 10 palettes in my collection style video. And then I was like, do you think you could do that, Tara? <laughs> I think that I could, I don't know. I was, I don't know, I was thinking about it, but that Nikki Tutorials palette would be in that video, just saying. And then these last four here. This is such a beautiful palette. Maybe it was eleven dollars. It was like seven, eight, or eleven, something like that, because they were on such a good sale. So nice, though, right? So that is the dark uh, fantasy palette right there from Beauty Bay. It's really pretty. One palette from Beauty Bay that I don't have, which I think was their first kind of twenty pan in this kind of style, is the Book of Magic, and I've been trying to like get my hands on that forever. It's, I think it's the only one that I don't have in this style and it's so, so pretty. Um, they should just come back out with it because I know tons of people love that eyeshadow palette. Anyway, the other one that I got in the 20 color palettes is the New Mood palette. Uh, same amount of product, 0 0.05 ounces, also made in the PRC. This is also a standalone for me. It's got mirrors in them. They flip back nicely. Just another really pretty fun color story. This one's 
got some more, you know, kind of bright shades in it. These next ones. And then these guys. Such pretty blues. It's like a matte periwinkle kind of color. That white looking shade is a duochrome with a pink shift to it, which I think I got a little bit of brown shadow in there. Get a little bit better swatch of that guy for you guys. There. And these guys. That one's got like a bit of a blue duochrome to it, that other white looking shade. And then these last four. So that one is the Beauty Bay New Mood right there. Yeah, I just, you just can't beat the price, man, for the quality and that's everything that I got in that I purchased this week I did get in two really lovely PR packages from some of my favorite brands so this first one is from Pixie and I think this is a new range from them which I'm excited about because I've got acne prone skin so it came in this uh, box right here I need to I need to clear out little fuzzies real quick but it's the clarity collection this cat just won't stop jumping in the window I had to crack the window because these lights are so warm <laughs> I haven't had a chance to use any of these just yet but I'm excited about it because I use um, the pixie glow tonic for years I'm back on that kick again I kind of get it every once in a while bring in a little bit stronger acid like that Saturday skin 10% but for the most part I'm using morning and night the pixie glow tonic on my skin it's just ugh, it's just such a lovely product um so i'm excited about this because there's a toner in here too it's the clarity toner i have got acne prone skin and this is a salicylic acid which i do like to take a, um a salicylic acid sometimes after i tone with the cotton pad with the glycolic and just pat it over my skin because that salicylic cleans out the pores glycolic kind of sloughs off the surface if that makes sense so i'm excited to try that one because again i love pixie toners there's the clarity cleanser with a uh, salicylic acid and probiotics Clarity Concentrate Clarifying Serum, that's an interesting one. Clarity Lotion, which is an oil-free moisturizer, which something like that I would use almost like a, um, a serum type product underneath a heavier lotion, because again, I've got dry skin, but that one, it's probably got, it says oil-free formula to boost instant, for an instant boost of hydration while minimizing the appearance of pores. So I might try that one kind of under makeup underneath the Josie Marin SPF 47. And then there's also the zero zit remedy which kind of yeah it's a spot solution so i think again because i hadn't seen this in target i think this is a new range for pixie and it's their clarity collection right there so i'm excited to try these because like i said again i've got uh i've got the acne prone skin so huge thank you to pixie for sending that guy over and then i got a really big box from josie baron it's like this super massive box so let me pull the paperwork out <laughs> So the box is so big because it's got like this kind of yoga sitting cushion in it, which is actually quite soft. So I'm going to probably put that on my chair in my office. And then I was so excited about this because I had gotten emails about this new moisturizer. It's the Pro Retinol Mega Moisture Face Cream. Mega Moisture gets me because I, again, have got the dry skin, especially in the dead of winter. So 1.7 fluid ounce jar. Let's open it up here. And I just got this one as well, so I haven't had a chance to use it, but Josie Marin does make some of my favorite skincare products. Um, I've been using SPF 47 for years. So it comes in a glass jar packaging, and it says on here, 
um, reboot your skin firms and smooths the look of fine lines and wrinkles without irritation powered by pro retinol and 100 percent pure argan oil plump skin with sodium hyaluronate a smaller form of hyaluronic acid helping to restore skin's volume and youthful bounce refines texture and brightens lackluster skin with powerful fruit pulp extracts so i'm excited because this is a heavier cream let's open it up once um, it does have hyaluronic acid in it so what i found is products like moisturizers and serum that have hyaluronic acid in them if i put them on i top it with a heavier moisturizer to kind of keep that hydration in my skin so it doesn't kind of pull moisture from the air because i'm in a very dry environment if that makes sense ah yeah it looks like a, a pretty you know it's a thick cream should we get a little bit out Ooh. It is a thicker cream, but it almost, um, it feels like really soft. Yeah, it's thicker, but it's smooth. It's like really smooth. It doesn't really have much of a scent to it. So I don't think there's any fragrance in it. Yeah, I'm excited about this. It feels very, very nice. On the back of my hands at least I'm gonna try this tonight should I try it should I try it by itself I'm mean, I think I'm gonna try it by itself usually I would try it and then top it with the belief true cream moisture bomb which I do like with everything <laughs> but maybe I'll just give it a shot by itself because it is supposed to be you know mega moisture that really gets me that mega moisture in the title so that's the new Josie Marin pro retinol mega moisture face cream Huge thank you to Josie Marin for sending this over. I'm very excited about it. And that is everything that I have for my haul today. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to wear sunscreen and I will see you guys later. Bye.